Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. How you guys doing? Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm going to use the mic because they're recording it, so I just want to make sure, you know, if you guys have, if you guys have anything, what about, how far can I go? Let's just test this. Still work? All right, That's perfect. Good. All right. This is good. I got I got a place to walk. I like that. Good. Uh, Jesus. Oh man. <laughs> well that's coming, man. Right. That's later, dude. <laughs> that's coming. Uh, All right. That's coming. Jesus. Yeah, so is everyone is everyone alive this morning? Is that too early? Everyone have their in dose of coffee? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Jesus, yeah. Well, uh, welcome. This is uh, uh, Holy Spirit, I think, and being filled with Holy Spirit is what we're calling this. And uh, so I'm excited. Are you guys excited? Yeah. Jesus. Holy, holy, holy. Huh. Yeah, I, I'm, this is going to be kind of a different, uh, you know, I'm not necessarily going to be like sitting up here like just teaching and give a five-point message and we're going to just encounter Holy Spirit. Like, I just feel like, what better way, what better way to talk about Holy Spirit when, when He just comes? Exactly. <laughs> when He just comes into the room and hangs out with us and we get to encounter Him, right? Right on. This is so much funner. Oh, dude, you're awesome. I want to let go of my head. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet. Oh. Perfect. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, so um, let's, uh, let's, just, let's just close our eyes just for a minute. Oh, you're perfect. You won't, you won't, get, you won't get scolded because you're late. <laughs> let's just close our eyes. Jesus, just put your hands out like you're receiving a gift. Thank you, Lord. Holy Spirit. God, we just invite you to come right now. We invite your presence. We invite you, Holy Spirit, to come into the room right now. Jesus. Ah. 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 Jesus. It doesn't matter how early it is. God still loves to show up early in the morning. <laughs> Thank you, God, for your spirit. We welcome you. We honor you. We honor your presence. We honor you in the room. God, you are amazing. Father, wow, you are amazing. Holy Spirit, you are amazing. We just honor you, Papa. Mm. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Uh, wow, you guys feel that? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Increase, God. Increase. Oh, thank you, Increase, God, what you're doing. Increase. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Uh -huh. Increase. <coughs> Jesus. So don't be afraid. This is, this is a good place to just uh, encounter God. You have permission to encounter the Holy Spirit the whole entire time. I don't mind when the Holy Spirit inter interrupts me. So... <laughs> So I, we just we just give you permission, Holy Spirit, to interrupt me whenever you like. <laughs> so this is encounter time. If you didn't get your encounter time this morning uh, before you came, then your encounter time you'll get it you'll get it before you leave. <laughs> Jesus. So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna talk a little about about who I am and and uh, stuff. So my name is Matt Armstrong. Uh, I'm originally from this uh, area, from St. George. And do uh, you guys know where St. George is? A little tiny St. George. So uh, I grew up there, lived there uh, most of my life, and uh, moved back and forth between the states when my, when my parents got divorced. And so in high school, kind of bounced back and forth and ended up getting in trouble and, and uh, you know, just kind of going to the party scene and, you know, had encounters with God when I was young and really experienced the presence of God you know, when I was really young and didn't really, you know, I knew God was real. I always knew God was real. And um, so I just went after, you know, whatever I wanted at the time. And that was, uh, you know, party, drugs, trying to fill whatever I, these voids I had in my life. And, and uh, you know, I, 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 I over OD'd a couple times and, you know, had some bad uh, um, 
uh, car accidents, and uh, just, uh, but God just, you know, in His mercy, just, just kept, just kept me. And uh, I remember one time when I had a really bad OD once, and, and I remember I was like, I was like passing out and everything, and uh, I was like, God, if you, if you save me, I will like. I will live for you. Like if you make sure I don't die here, I will live for you. And uh, anyway, I didn't die. So uh, <laughs> a couple <of> days, <laughs> but that only lasted for a couple of days. Uh, you know, I've been doing drugs, and I just went back into into it after hardcore. And uh, so, anyways, I got to a point where I, I was just I got really paranoid, kind of crazy, and ended up just leaving everything, leaving my job, went and lived with my mom. And uh, it's really it's kind of the Lord, and and uh, I. We lived there with my mom for about two weeks, and they kicked me out. So I lived on the streets for a little, little, little while until I could find a house. And uh, so I got a place, and and uh, then kind of I was just doing my own thing still. And, and uh, then I ended up going to jail. I went to jail for I, I broke in and stole a bunch of computer equipment and, and stuff in this place. And some friends and I were partying. So we got caught and went to jail, and uh, that's where that, that was my D day. <laughs> That was where I encountered this amazing God that changed my life. And I remember I was in my jail cell, you know, uh, concrete walls like this, sitting up there, <laughs> sitting up there in my jail cell, my top bunk. And uh, I remember the like, Holy Spirit like, came in the room. Jesus came wow. in the room, and, I, and I, I knew it was Jesus. I felt him. I felt his presence. And, and I knew he was, he was, I knew it was him. I just knew it was him. And, and uh, you know, my, my cellmate was on the bottom bunk beneath me. And, I'm just sitting there, I'm like, oh my God, like, if you give me a reason to live, I'll serve you the rest of my life. If you give me a reason and purpose and destiny, I'll serve you, I'll give my everything, and I'll serve you the rest of my life. And in that moment, everything just shifted and changed, and I felt this lightness, like all this heaviness came off, and this lightness, I started laughing. I just started laughing, and I haven't stopped, so. <laughs> 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 Come on. Drone's been laughing like you all week. In anticipation of you coming. Oh, man. So, I mean, God is just good. You know, He's good. And, and when, I, when, I, when I got saved, I was all in. You know, like, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not in my tippy toes like I'm not there's no point of that for me like uh, you know I, I I needed everything that God had so I had nothing everything was stripped away so if I'm gonna if I'm going to do this thing I'm going to do it right and I'm going to go all in I'm going to go with everything Jesus has got for me I don't care about religion I don't care about what people think I don't care about that stuff I just want Jesus <laughs> I just want everything that he has I want everything that Holy Spirit has and, and that's it that's period <laughs> And uh, so I just went after God. I just, whatever God had, whatever I read about in the Bible, I'm like, this is for me. I, if, if it's in the Bible, then it's, it's game on. Like, you know, Jesus did it, you know, and he said that we can do what he does. Like, and even greater, it's, it's game on. It's like, okay, I'm going after it. And uh, so I, I did. We just, I, uh, you know, I'd go wherever God was showing up. You know, I'd hear, I went to a couple conferences where I heard God was showing up and doing amazing things. And, and I would just go. We would go and, and, and I just got rocked. And I knew it was Jesus. It was some things that just blew my now, but now I look back, I'm like, that is just so weird, some of that stuff that happened. But I never even questioned it in the moment because it's like I knew it was God. Like I just knew, you know, like I, it wasn't weird to me even though it was my first exposure to, you know, this stuff. It was just like, oh, this is normal. <laughs> this is this is just normal. This is how Christian life is meant to be. This is what's this is normal. I didn't grow up in like a church, so I didn't there was no I didn't have a bunch of things I had to unlearn. <laughs> I didn't you know <laughs> I didn't know how to behave as a proper Christian. <laughs> so I just behaved like Jesus, you know. <laughs> He was a rebel. Jesus was a rebel. You know, he did all the things that really uh, made the Pharisees, all the religious people, angry. <laughs> you know, the, all the religious people were really angry at Jesus because he just did not fit the box of what it was meant to look like as a Christian. And uh, and you know, I love that. I think that's I think that's what we're supposed to do. So 
So just my journey of just going after him, I, uh, I remember the school, uh, uh, Bethel uh, School of Supernatural Ministry, I watched a movie about, and it had a couple clips in it, it was a Finger of God, if you guys have ever heard of it. And uh, I knew that was a school that I just knew. I was like, oh, that's a school I need to go to. Like, I'm going to go to that. And I was living in Maine at the time. And, and, uh, and I just knew. I didn't have to pray about it. Well, you know, when you see, when you see something, you're like, oh, like, yep, yeah, that's it. That's, that's what I'm going after, you know. I'm, like, praying for people in the streets. I'm, I'm doing this stuff, trying to see breakthrough, trying to see God show up. And I just like, okay, well, that's, it's happening there, and I'm going. Like, there wasn't, you know, I didn't have to spend 50 days in fasting and praying. Well, sometimes, you know, maybe good to do that. I've never done that, but I'm sure it is good. But, uh, you know, and so I just went. And uh, God totally changed my life. I, you know, I got radically transformed even greater. Uh, discovered who I was and discovered what, you know, even more what I was born for and my passions. And I got to travel all over the world and get to see amazing things. You know, I've been to uh, the Middle East. Um, I've been to uh, Europe and... Mexico and all over the United States and, and just seeing God do amazing stuff and in churches and home groups and you know on the streets like wherever wherever people were hungry that's where we would go and uh, you know if people were hungry it's like hey sign me up because I know God is about to do something amazing you know like wherever there is hunger you know if you paint a target on yourself huh? <laughs> When you paint a target on yourself for Holy Spirit to land, like you become a landing pad for Holy Spirit when there's hunger in your life, you know? Come on. Just like this guy over here. This guy's got hunger, you know? Like Jeff, he's just, he's just like, he's full of hunger. Like when you're, when you've got hunger, man, like you just open yourself up to like a, a bombardment of Holy Spirit, you know, getting ready to drop Holy Ghost bombs on you. <laughs> Jesus. Thank you, Father. Oh man, that was that was free. You guys can take that free. <laughs> yeah. So you know, a big thing uh, too. You know, in, in my test throughout my testimony in my life is is uh, you know my mom too is a uh, some my mom was a was a person that really uh, showed uh, faith and ministry and love and and character and all stuff in my life and. And uh, you know when I when I when I got saved, I directly kind of relate my salvation to from to her. You know, and she she would pray all the time. I mean, this is my brother here too, Taylor. Ooh, he was awesome. And uh, and uh, we you know like she would pray for us all the time. She would just pray pray that God would just you know arrest our lives and possess us and and just grab a hold of us and and uh, you know I firmly believe it's because of my mom's prayers I'm here today and. And, uh, you know, when she got saved, oh, when I got saved, um, uh, you know, obviously she loved it. She, took, she, she let me move back in. And, uh, <laughs> and I just grew there, you know. I had a lot of things, the old patterns of lifestyle that had to be changed and stuff. So I just stayed with them, and I worked, and they helped me get a job. And, you know, because, you know, when you come out of that lifestyle, there's a lot of things that you got to change, right? And uh, so I just stayed there with my mom. And my mom actually... Uh, um, uh, had cancer at the time and esophageal cancer of, of the esophagus and and uh, so we were you know working through that whole process and, and going after healing we knew God was real we knew God you know we knew God would love to heal and, and so we in the whole process we would just go after healing after my mom and, and praying and we had prayer rituals where the, literally the whole town came out even unbelievers and surrounded the house and this one time surrounded the house we're inside the house and there's all these people from the town, and they're just praying and singing, and like we're inside the house, and they're just praying and having like prayer vigil, and it was amazing. And we had so there was tons of that happen, and uh, she actually ended up passing away in 2008. And uh, um, I, I remember, I remember, you know, she uh, when she passed on, was in our house, and and I remember uh, uh, going upstairs after, and, and you know, seeing her in the bed, and and. Uh, I just, I just was like, I was so happy, you know, I was like, man, my mom is with Jesus right now, like, how cool is that, and so we went down to the, we went down to the uh, church and worshipped, and I just get, we just worshipped God, and, you know, I got the flags out, and we're just worshipping God, and it was like a super late night, and, uh, and, and that was, and her life has been like really impactful for me, because that spurred me on for healing, and, you know, 
to want to see miracles. I, and I never once doubted that God didn't heal. Never once, even when she passed on, I was like, this didn't, didn't compute to me. I, I knew a lot of people that had struggled with it and was like, had a lot of struggles of like, oh, you know, kind of got mad at God, but it didn't even like come into my brain. I didn't even think that way. It was like, you know, totally the grace of God. It didn't even, didn't even compute. It didn't even make sense. It just, I just had this fire to go after people and see people get healed. And I knew the Holy Spirit was good. I knew God was good. I knew He's a good Father who's in a good mood and He loves to heal His children. And so I just went after it, went after it more. And that's what kind of spurred me on to really pursue. Uh, you know, the supernatural in my life, to really pursue God's, uh, you know, miraculous works and, and everything that He is. And uh, so, you know, that that's kind of shaped who I am. And that's kind of shaped where I am, who I am today. And I directly relate that, you know, because that whole experience. And uh, me and my wife, this is my wife, Michelle, just, and, uh, and you guys, make sure you get to meet her and say hi to her. She's not only beautiful outside, she's beautiful inside. <laughs> and uh, so we actually met in California, and uh, we met at, our, at school. Um, her, my best friend, who was living with me at, uh, at the time, uh, was dating her sister. And uh, so, you know, they just thought, hey, why don't you bring, you know, your sister Michelle around? So they... So Angie was bringing Michelle around, and we get to know each other, and we started dating. So it was like two best friends dating two sisters. It was awesome. And they got married, and now we're married, so it's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> and, um, yeah, so, <laughs> so now we're youth pastors in St. George, and uh, we've been there for about a year and a half. Um, we moved from California. And so it's been awesome. It's been it's been great. It's been a great experience and challenges, and it's where the real it's where the things that you've you know learned and it, it meets rubber meets the road kind of thing. And so we've just been plugging away and seeing God doing awesome stuff. We have about you know fifty to seventy kids that come out and you know pray for. We've seen a bunch of miracles this week. Kids getting healed and getting rocked, and and we're just keep going after it because we know God's doing amazing stuff. And we run like a kind of like a youth center. Also, it's like a whole building that we have just for, for you. So, it's uh, it's good. Life is good. Jesus is good. God is good. <laughs> yes. Well, let's just put our hands out again. Remember I said, this isn't just me teaching or talking. This is an encounter time. All in the Spirit. And uh, at any moment, um, my, my friend Jeff here, you guys know, and my wife Michelle, if they may come around and just lay hands on you and pray for you and release the presence of God because, you know, ultimately we want you to encounter Him. You know, anybody can, we can teach and teach to a blue in the face, but when Holy Spirit comes, you know, He can do all that kind of stuff in just a moment and everything changes, right? <laughs> Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. Holy Spirit. Jesus. Thank you for encounters, Lord. Thank you for encounters. Yeah, I really felt today, like yesterday, I was, I was just praying, and I really felt like God is about to shift uh, things in people's hearts and minds. And I feel like there's going to be people, there's going to be like paradigm shifts today that's going to radically change your life for the rest of your life, the way you think about yourself and the way you think about God. I really feel like there's going to be like these shifts in the spirit where you're going to feel like just something shifting over you and in your thought life. And it's actually going to change the way you, the way you do things, the way you do ministry, the way you do life. Everything's going to change. Oh, Jesus, thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit. Yeah. Yeah, I also have I wrote down this, and uh, I said there's a man named uh, Mark who's a leader, and also James. Is there a James in here? Yeah, right here. Yeah, James and James and Mark. And uh, you're, you know, is there another Mark? So I just felt like God just was saying that. Um, do you do? Do you? I know you do 
you do is lead ministry and leading. So do you do what do you what do you do? Do you lead and do ministry and stuff? No, not really. No, uh, I'm getting into worship a bit. Probably. Yeah, I really felt like I really felt like God is just saying like He's about to break in your life and your ministry on like a whole new level. I feel like He's about ready to like just break in. And I actually feel I actually feel for you too, James. Is is I feel like. Um, I feel like sometimes you've doubted that, like, hey, am I a leader? Or, hey, am I, am I meant to, like, step in and do this thing in ministry? And, like, like, you know, what am I doing? Like, am I really meant for this? I feel like, I feel like you know, sometimes we all go through that, right? You know, I've, I've been in that place, you know? And I just feel like God's just saying, like, you know, you're born for this. This is what you're born for. You're born for to release my kingdom wherever you go. You're born for this. And I feel like he's going to start unlocking places in ministry for you that you've never really thought about. That you're like, oh, I never really thought that I would be doing that or I would even have a passion to do that. I just feel like he's about ready to like unlock those things in your life. And even in your in your worship and your leading, everything that you do, I just he's a, he's about ready to unlock that kind of stuff in your life. Yeah. So Jesus, we just release that. Father, let's just stretch our hands towards him right now. Jesus, yeah. We just release that Father right now. We just pray for increase in what you're doing. We just pray, God, for increase, Lord. Wow, oh wow, on your on this leadership, God, that you've placed on him, the leadership anointing that he that you've placed on him, Father, right now. And I actually feel like there's a like a mantles like through your uh, generation, like there's been people that have been like uh, ministered, like or something in your generation. I don't know if that's like, I don't know if it's your dad or like people late like before your dad. Like I feel like there's people that have been like that. There's actually like an anointing that they walked in. And that God's wanting to release even on you, like a, 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 even a greater anointing, and just stepping into that. So God, we just release that, Father, right now. We release that, God. Do what you love to do. <laughs> ah, Come on, Jesus. <laughs> wow, Father. <laughs> increase, God. Increase, 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 increase. Wow, increase, God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord, that he is a son. God, that he is a son. God, he gets to walk confidently as a son, Father. Thank you, Papa. <laughs> Jesus. Jesus, Jesus. Increase. Wow. Oh, the Spirit. Yeah, Mark, I just, I just feel like, you know, God, the same thing to you. Like, I just feel like God is, is getting ready to increase, like, yeah, I feel like God's getting ready to increase your uh, um, influence in in, lead, in your leadership. I feel like He's He's getting ready to increase your influence that you have on people around you in your sphere of influence. Like I feel like I feel like sometimes you felt like you know like you maybe you're in this place and you're like oh, I feel like I'm in a, a cave or something. I feel like I'm in like I feel like I'm hidden in a cave, you know. And sometimes we see that as like oh that's not a good thing. That's you know like. But reality, that's a beautiful thing. It's a great place. Like I, I pray, God, keep me in the cave. Like I want to be hidden in your cave, and and you know, like it's in that place where you know where we're hidden in Him, and and you know we're protected. Because I mean, when we come out of that cave, it's a whole different, it's a whole different experience, you know. And and I just feel like God's getting ready to increase your your influence that you have, and influence around people, and and with uh, leaders and with uh, with other um, people that you're working with and doing things with. So, Lord, we just thank you for that. Just stretch our hands towards Mark right now. We just thank you, God. We say increase. Increase, God. Increase what you're doing. Increase, God, what you're doing. Increase your leadership on his life. God, increase your leadership. Wow. Oh, yeah, God, increase that. We just, I just speak sonship over you. A crown of sonship over you right now. In Jesus' name, a crown of sonship over you. And I just see too, like the God's wanting to give you fathers. There's like there's there's people in your life that He's wanting to give you as fathers even more, that you would that you would be directly just kind of submitted and under even even to a greater degree. That you they would just be pouring into your life as a father and and you know the great thing about fathers is that they, a father always wants their son to go further. <laughs> a father, a true father, always wants their son to go further than they ever gone. And so, Lord, we just thank you for that right now. We just thank you for that for those fathers that are coming into Mark's life right now in Jesus' name. 
Ha ha. Bam. Yes. Jesus. Oh man. That was cool. <laughs> I love it when the Holy Spirit does that. Man, it's so good. Uh, you can never get bored. You can never get bored of that. Like you can never get bored of like like man. It's just without Holy Spirit, like it's just boring. Like Christian life is just boring. I just don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm serious, man. Like, like, uh, like if I, if, if, it, wow, I'm getting drunk. <laughs> if I, if I had to, like, just you know, if I had to just like say yes to Jesus and it ended there, and I just like had to just believe, like, I don't know if I would have done it. Like, I don't know, like. <laughs> <laughs> like if it just was me having to go to church every every Sunday and pay like my tithes, like I would have came up a long time ago. <laughs> Come on, but we have Jesus that is like Holy Spirit that Holy wants Spirit. to live with us. Holy Spirit that wants to, to to dwell with us, be our best friend, talk to us. Like you can't get better than that. You can't get better than that. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> Put your hand on the person beside you. Wow. Yeah, Jeff, and you guys you guys can just feel free to just lay hands on people too. No. Holy Spirit. We just release God. Come on, just release the presence of God. You carry Him. You just release Holy Spirit right now. We release Holy Spirit. Increase, Papa. Whoa. Man, God's all over you. <laughs> Increase, Father. Increase, God, right now. <laughs> Jesus. Wow. Holy, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Yeah, He's alive and active. <laughs> yes. Increase, 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 increase. Holy Spirit. <laughs> Jesus. Oh man, increase, Father. Increase. <laughs> you know, there's no separation between you and the Papa. There's no separation. Nothing can get in the way. I don't care what you've been told. It says that no height, no depth, no angels, no demons, no principalities and powers can separate you from the love of God. Nothing can separate you from Him. You know, like your your junk isn't big enough for God. <laughs> I like what I uh, like what Pastor said last night. He said, you know, if, you know, like if if uh, something's an issue, you know, your God's not big enough. Like you know, if you can keep your God in the box, like, He's not big enough. You know, like my I serve a big God. I serve a really big God and a really small devil. <laughs> you can't, you know, like it, you can't get in the way of Him coming and, and Him experiencing. Yeah, you experiencing him. You know, like what did what did Jesus say? He said, Hey, if you ask for Holy Spirit, will he will I give you a stone? <laughs> Come on. He said, No, like I'm a, like you, even wicked fathers wouldn't do that. Like fathers on earth wouldn't do that. How, I'm, I'm so much greater than earthly fathers. You know, if you ask for Holy Spirit, I will give you Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> she got it. She's got it. <laughs> if you ask for Holy Spirit, He will give you Holy Spirit. <laughs> Come on. Jesus. You know, I, I sometimes think that we, we actually put Holy Spirit in a box. So we put Holy Spirit as this mystical thing that just kind of floats around and shows up whenever Jesus, whenever we have church, sometimes He shows up. You know, the reality is, like, Jesus honored Holy Spirit so much. Like, his honor that he had for Holy Spirit was, was something that, that we need to pay attention to. And, um, you know, he said, he, he even actually, he went as far as this. He said, you know, it's greater that I go. This is, he's talking to his disciples. And he's like, hey, hey listen, guys, it's greater that I leave you. It's, it's, a better, it's better that I leave you. Just, just trust me on this. 
He's like, it's better that I leave you. And then you guys think, like, this is the son of God in the flesh. <laughs> like, if you were one of the 12 disciples, you're like, dude, you, you, what did you eat this morning? Like, what are, you, what are you on? Like, are you kidding me? You're the son of God with me right here. What can be better than this? You know? But he, Jesus understood, Jesus understood the importance and the role of Holy Spirit in our lives. You know, and we have to realize that because he said, hey, it's better that I go because if I go, I'm going to send to you Holy Spirit. And listen, it, it's better because Holy Spirit isn't just going to, he's not, I, I can only be in so many places right now. I'm in body and flesh. I can only be here and over here and over there. But listen, Holy Spirit, he's going to come and he's going to dwell inside of you. Oh, man. Oh, I'm getting drunk. That's a good word right there. <laughs> Uh, like Holy Spirit, he's like, hey, it's better because Holy Spirit is going to come and he's going to rest on you. You know, in the Old Testament, what happened when Holy Spirit would come? Holy Spirit would come upon people and they would usually prophesy for a given time, for a given moment. And they would do something in power for a given time, for that moment, and then Holy Spirit would lift off. It was just, a, it was just for a resting for a moment and then coming off. And so what happened... Oh, this is good. I'm going to start preaching now. <laughs> here we go. Here we go. What happened, you know, what happened when Jesus, before he went into ministry? Remember, John went and baptized him, right? And what happened? The heavens were ripped open. As in ripped, they were rent, the heavens were torn open as in to never, to never put back in place. They were so torn apart that you cannot put them back together. They were ripped apart and all of a sudden, Holy Spirit came and, and dwelt and rested upon Jesus. Oh, oh. oh man, it never came off. <laughs> he came and rested upon, uh, upon Jesus. Holy Spirit came. Even Jesus needed Holy Spirit. How much more do we need your Holy Spirit? If Jesus needed Holy Spirit, don't you think we might need Holy Spirit? <laughs> Come on, this is the very beginning of his ministry. Like He's like, listen, I can't go and do anything else unless I get baptized. I need to get baptized and the Holy Spirit comes and dwells and, and rests upon Jesus. And he goes out and starts moving in power. Jesus had such awe and reverence for Holy Spirit. He had such awe and reverence for Holy Spirit. He honored, he honored Holy Spirit. You know, I think sometimes we, we actually forget how much we need to honor Holy Spirit. You know, I had this encounter one time, and uh, I was in worship. And I'm standing at the front, I remember, I'm in worship. I'm standing there, and my eyes closed, I'm just worshiping. And all of a sudden, I couldn't hear the band anymore. And it was like I it was like a vacuum over me. I felt like I got sucked up. Like that's all I don't know I can explain it. Everything was moving really fast. And I just couldn't hear anything anymore. And all I could see is what I was seeing. I had my eyes closed and see what was in front of me. And all of a sudden, I, I, it, it's kind of like this fast moving elevator that stops suddenly. And I'm standing there and there's a table in front of me. This big table. And I look and I see Father God, Holy Spirit, and Jesus sitting there. And they're, they're just like welcoming me. They're like, and there was a seat for me. They said, come on in. Come, come and have dinner with us. Come sit and eat with us. And I remember, I couldn't hear anything else. I'm like, what is happening? Is this real? This is awesome. And so I just went in and I sat down. And, uh, and, and, I, and I watched as Father God and they would all, and Jesus and Holy Spirit, they would all honor each other. But they, I, what I really noticed is I actually noticed how much more they would honor Holy Spirit. And it really was interesting to me because I thought they would actually honor Jesus more. I thought, you know, but it was actually the, the honor that they were placing towards Holy Spirit like really kind of took me off guard because I, I just I wasn't in my paradigm, wasn't in my thinking. And I realized, I remember what Jesus said, hey, like, listen, you, you can blast, you know, don't blast me in the Holy Spirit. Don't, you, know, you know what I mean? Like they would talk about that. Like don't grieve Holy Spirit. Like he would talk about that. He never talked about really... Like he, he he put it he put it on Holy Spirit so much, and I realized the the honor that they had for each other, but not even more that they had for Holy Spirit. And you know we know that Father God Holy Spirit they're one, but they're separate, right? And and it was amazing. It was really really it was really like it just rocked me, and it was really cool because you know after that I remember Jesus uh, Father God was like okay let's pray for the world, 
and we'll say grace, and we're going to pray for the world. And I'm like, this is awesome. You pray for the world, and before you have grace. And I remember, like, I remember standing there looking down, and I remember seeing the globe and seeing the world. And the Father, they were praying for, for the world, for the people in the world. And, and, and they got up, and after, and they, and they prayed for me. And I remember when the Father came over and got ready to put his hands on me, I just fell over. And I remember thinking, you can fall over in heaven. <laughs> oh, this is awesome. I just thought that was like an earthly thing or something. I don't know. <laughs> And uh, but that counter really rocked me and really changed me because I, I I I never seen them interact like that together and it put a whole new uh, honor and reverence towards Holy Spirit and I realized I mean how much more do I need to do I need to get to know Holy Spirit and His personality and what He's like I need to know Him like this is the most deepest most intimate part of God Holy Spirit and uh, you know it's it's a necessity that we know how He works and how He moves. And his attributes. We need, we need to know that we need to know him. And you know, the coolest thing is we get to we get to be best friends with him. You know, he goes with us everywhere we go. You know, like <laughs> yesterday. Oh, okay, I think we need to take another drink here. <laughs> then we'll move on. Just push your hands out. Put one hand on the person next to you, one hand on your heart. <laughs> this is, yeah, everyone's getting like confused here. What about you? Jesus, come on, just start. I want actually I want I don't want you to pray with words. I actually want you just to encounter Holy Spirit. Just to turn your affections to God right now. Just turn your affections to Him. Whoa. Yeah, Holy Spirit. Just turn your affections to Him. It's like just like it's like turning your heart to Him. And I want you to when you start experiencing Him, we start feeling Him, we start connecting with Him. I just want you to release that on the on the person beside you. Whoo. Ha ha. Holy, wow, Holy Spirit, oh, ha ha, ha 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 ha, oh, 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 oh. oh man, thank you Father, uh, increase God, wow. Yeah, you can just feel like this temperature rising. Can you feel it? You can feel his presence. Wow, he's just like increasing and rising right now. Oh, holy, holy. Yeah. See, in this place, in his presence, is the atmosphere of heaven. In his presence is the atmosphere of heaven. In his presence is the atmosphere of heaven. It's the king's domain, right? Pray that my kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. Kingdom, king's domain. So when the when his presence shows up, it's his domain, it's the king's domain. Wow, this is the literally the atmosphere of heaven. See, the more we have honor towards that, the more we have honor, we realize it's not just some tingly thing we feel. It's literally the most living God that's alive, real, here with us right now. When we understand that, we put honor upon that, we actually begin to experience and encounter Him even more. Sometimes we just we just flippantly pretend or, or, or think about God or His presence just flippantly and we don't realize, man, this is the, this is the King of glory with us right now, the King's domain. Literally, when He comes, everything changes. Everything changes. You know, if, if sometimes we, we, have, we need to ask God, God, open my eyes so I can see what's going on in the Spirit right now. Open my eyes so I can see what you're doing in the room and in the Spirit. Because if we can be able to connect with what God is doing, then we can actually, we actually start beginning to have more honor towards what, what we're experiencing. Does that make sense? You know, because like when the King is here, when His presence is here, you know, that means that depression is not allowed. <laughs> That means that anxiety is not allowed. That means that sickness isn't allowed. Come on. You know, like, do you think people in heaven are happy? <laughs> do you think people in heaven are happy? That, was a, that wasn't a quick, quick trick question. <laughs> so when the king is here, that's what, when his presence is here, wow. That means we can step into joy. If you were feeling depressed, 
you can step into joy because Holy Spirit is in the room. Come on, you can step into that place where, where, where joy is because in His presence is what? Fullness of joy. Come on. What if we just believe the Bible? <laughs> what would happen if we just started to believe what was actually spoken to us? Through this most holy word. <laughs> oh man. I think that would change everything. <laughs> holy Spirit. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Holy. You know what God's ultimate plan is for us? Is that we become habitations for Him. Huh. That we become habitations for Him. That we can host Him wherever we go. We can host His presence wherever we go. Come on. You can't help but affect other people around you when you're hosting the presence of God. When you step into a room, things change just because God showed up. That's right. Because He's with you all the time. I get a kick out of sometimes, you know, when we, I even do it when we pray and the service is something. Like, okay, God, come now. It's time for you to come. He's like, no, oh, he's already there. He's showing up. He lives in you. <laughs> he's already here. Exactly. So don't be waiting. Just, just, just recognize him. Exactly. <laughs> oh, man. It's like that song, like, make me aware of your presence. Right? Increase our awareness. Wow. For his presence. <laughs> Holy here, Spirit. Wow. You know, he never has to leave you. You never, you can walk 24-7 experiencing Him in your awareness towards Holy Spirit. You know, there was a guy, uh, his name was, uh, his name was, uh, oh, I just slipped my mind, Brother, uh, is it Brother Yoon? No. Brother Young. Brother Young. I think so, yes. And he probably wrote the book, Practicing the Presence. Is that Brother Young? No, Francis. Brother Lawrence. Brother Lawrence, that's it. Uh, Brother Lawrence, he wrote the book, Practicing the Presence. And he was this monk guy, and he would just practice the presence. He would wash dishes. He would stand, and he would just wash dishes. And just experiencing the presence of God. And he would just, <laughs> he would just wash. And just, and just encounter, practice the presence of God. And people would come just to wash him. <laughs> wash him. Wash dishes. He, they would come just to watch him wash dishes. Because he would just practice the presence of God. He wrote all these letters. And they put it together into a book. And, and, and that's what he would do. He would just learn to host the presence of God. He would learn to host the King of Glory. That wherever, that wherever he went, God, he would literally host him. And things would happen. You know, It's like that amazing revival said, that said, Hey, listen, set yourself on fire and people will come and watch you burn. You know, it's like, we, do, we just need to practice hosting His presence. You know, because the reality is this, is that in the Old Testament, you know, when they had uh, uh, David, why there was so much favor on David's life is because, why did God say, He is a man after my own heart? Is because David had the idea, David had the place of like, I need to find a place where God can dwell. I need to find a place where God can come and can dwell. I need to find a dwelling. I won't put sleep to my eyes until I find a place where God can dwell. And you know what? That, that Mark David, God was like, yes, that is a man after my own heart. It's a place, because that's what I want. I want to, I'm a man. I want to dwell. I'm God with us. I want to dwell with my people. I want, to, I want to go back to the way it was with Adam and Eve, where I would walk with Adam in the cool of the day. That wasn't just a metaphor. That he, God would literally walk with Adam in the cool of the day. So he, this is, just think about that. God, this is God's original plan. It's like, this, this is what I desired. When I had thought up the idea of having children, billions of children, my, the idea was that I could come and dwell with my people. That I could come and know them. I could come and be with them all the time. That they could experience me and I could experience them. Like God doesn't want you just to experience Him. He wants to experience you. <laughs> Oh, Jesus. And listen, then the Old Testament is they created that habitation. They created that place where the, the holies of holies, the place where God dwelt. 
you know, and 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 God, Jesus is like, I'm gonna take a step further, man. Like I'm gonna, I, before the foundations of the earth was created, I already had this plan that I was gonna dwell with my people. He set it up in such a way that it was so easy that it was saying, listen, all you gotta do now is just you believe in Jesus. You believe in Jesus. Your old man dies. You become a new creation. You become a temple where I can come and live and bring my Holy Spirit and dwell inside of you. The holies of holies. This is, you have to think, you have to understand, the old, in the Old Testament, with the holies of holies, a priest, it was so holy that a priest could only go in there once a year. And then they would tie a rope around his ankle. And if he died, had any sin on him, they would just yank him out. You know, like this is, this is, this is how holy this place was. And see, God, Jesus came and now and gave us His righteousness. I'm not even going to go down that road because that's a beautiful place. But uh, God gave us His righteousness. Now that we're now we're righteous, not because of what we've done, because of what Christ has done. We step into His righteousness, and He opens up the door, and He brings His most holies of holies. That place where He would even kill a priest if there was a, a tiny bit of sin in His life. And He comes and takes all that and dwells inside of us. And like you have to understand, in the holies of holies, there was this thick veil that was covered around the holies of holies, and the, there was so much glory that the light would. There was no light in that would could allow inside the room, but the glory from from the covenant that it would literally light up the whole entire room. The, it, the, I'm trying to put this in perspective for you. This is how glorious and amazing. This is not made up. This is real. This is reality. This happened. You know, and, and God took all that holiness, all that amazing glory and, and passion and power and, and presence and came and dwelled inside of you. And he's like, that's my, that's been my plan since the beginning of time, is that I could go and dwell with my people. <laughs> wherever, wherever they go, where I can be their best friends. I can talk to them. I can, I can hang out with them. I can drink coffee with them. I can, you know, go on walks with them. I can tell them how much I love them. I can kiss them on the cheek. I wanna, I wanna surround them with their presence. I wanna give them love kisses from heaven. Like this is my plan. This has been my plan from the very beginning of time, is that I would have a people that I could dwell with. Exactly. Oh, Jesus. Come on. Does that not make you fall hopelessly in love with Jesus? <laughs> oh. oh, he's a really good daddy. He is a really good papa. He's a really good daddy. Jesus. I remember me and my wife, we were, this is a little while ago, we were uh, in St. John. And there's this really cool health store that we like to go to. So we walked in, and, and we're, uh, yeah, actually, before I have to tell this part, too, because this is, this is really powerful, we uh, actually got in a fight before we walked in. <laughs> and it wasn't a fight, you know, we don't, like, fist fight or anything, but, <laughs> but we got an argument, we were like, and before we got in, so we didn't walk in, like, all cheery, we're like, hey, you know, like, we walked in, like, we kind of had, like, a little argument, and we walked in, and, and uh, I was kind of like, oh. You know, frustrated. You guys, you guys probably never had any, you know, arguments with anybody. So, um, <laughs> so we walk in, and, and there's this guy there, and you know, it's I love like the I love those health food stores because they're always super new agey, and and like God like, loves to show up in those places. And so we walk in, and <laughs> it's so easy because they're like so open already. You know, they're just like whatever. <laughs> So we kind of like go in and, and and we're like looking at stuff and I don't know I think Michelle kind of initiated she's such she oh she just loves people so much and, and she was just I think she was making conversation I wanted to leave because I knew it was about to happen and <laughs> and because I wasn't in a very good mood at the time you know and so you know she wasn't either but she's just you know she's just never shuts it off she's always good and so we start we start talking and. Um, so uh, I think I think you were, we somehow got on the topic of uh, God or something. I don't even know. No, we didn't even bring up God. I, this was a while ago, so I forget how it went on. So we, we somehow got talking to him, and we're oh yeah, we talked about energies or something. And I'm like, really energies? I'm like, I I I have you know like I have this energy too. Like I you you know like do you want to experience it? Like do you want to experience this energy? And he's like. Yeah, sure, you know, I'm like just hold your hands out. And uh, and so he just put his hands out like this, and I'm like, I'm just gonna put my hands over, you're not gonna touch you, okay? And so here's the reality, guys. We carry him, right? 
Wherever we go, whether we're in a good mood or a bad mood, we still have him. Like, he's with us, he never leaves us. Like, it's, you're a believer, you're not a feeler, so. <laughs> they don't call you like, yes, I'm a feeler. Like, <laughs> no, you're a believer, you believe. Like, it's not just always based on your feelings, right? Although I love it when feelings match up with my beliefs. <laughs> And uh, so, so we just, I just started releasing the presence of God, but this time I'm getting whacked. Like, I'm like, I'm, you know, I'm no longer, I'm in the presence now, I'm like drunk, I forgot that I was, you know, upset before, and, and I'm like experiencing God, and, and you know, I just, re- so I'm just releasing, the best way to release, I keep hitting my ring there, the uh, best way to release uh, God on people is just to get in His presence. Like, you know, the reality, it's not about a prayer, like you can't, you can't just pray a prayer and like, you know, presto, like, everything's better. Like, you know, like, it's not about how you pray. Do you hear what I'm saying? Like, it's not about, like, words that you say or actions that you do. Or you, It's not a formula. There's no formula for any of this. Like, you know, like, some of us, like, you know, people that like formula, well, I'm sorry, there's no formula. You know, like, you know, we, and we all like formula because it's like, you know, you want something to happen, you just figure, well, you just do that again and this will happen, right? But there's no formula, it's relationship. You know, religion always wants formula. That's right. Religion always wants formula, but but God always has relationship. Relationship always takes a place of formula. He never did when he when Jesus prayed for people. He never did the same thing twice. You know, like like he always did things differently the way he the way he did it. And um, and so it's all it's all based on relationship. You know, because if we can get into formula, then we don't need God anymore. We can just get so good at formula that, hey, God's just, we don't need relationships, right? And so, and so, I forget where I was. Um, oh, yeah, so I'm releasing the presence of this guy. I got my hands over him, and we're just praying. We're both releasing the presence of God, and I'm just, you know, getting in his presence, and that's just the easiest, most easiest way, because, like, when God shows up, like, he's just the best evangelist. And so, I'm just releasing the presence of God, and I'm feeling it, and and all of a sudden, he goes, he's like, whoa, I, I feel like my hand's tingling. I feel like something going on. I'm like, what is that? And I'm like, oh, just, just, just hold on, man. Just, just stay right there. <laughs> and I'm, like, I'm just going to release the presence of God more. And he stops. He goes, whoa, my anxiety just left me. Oh, and I'm like, wow. come on. I'm like, do you, do you know what that is? Do you know what that energy is? He's like, what? I'm like, that's Jesus. Like, that's Holy Spirit. That's Jesus, the God that created the universe. Like the great spirit that, you know, like this is the God of everything. This is the, this is the real, true, one living God. And like that's what, that's what just happened. And just Jesus, that's his presence right there. He's like, are you serious? Like that is awesome. You know, and what was really cool is that we didn't pray for, I didn't know he had anxiety. I didn't know. He actually told us he has it a lot. He took things for it and he had anxiety all the time. And I didn't know that, but it was in his presence. It was in, in Holy Spirit, when Holy Spirit came, in his presence, like, he knows everything, and all of a sudden, boom, anxiety leaves. Because he's in the king's domain. He's, he's literally in heaven. Like, he's literally experiencing heaven on earth. <laughs> Jesus said, pray that my kingdom come on earth as it is in heaven. He was literally experiencing heaven, and he just didn't know it. <laughs> you know, you don't have to give people a five-point message before they can encounter God. <laughs> You don't need to tell them all about Jesus and how he died and all that kind of stuff. Like, you can tell that after. <laughs> you know, once they once they encounter the true living God, it's just like you know, you know there's no. It makes it really easy for you. You just tell what happened. <laughs> you're like, oh yeah, like you're this guy. This is, this just happened to you. Yeah, well, let me tell you what, what that is. Like, it's, this is this. Is, God that I know, who's my best friend, and, and he can be your best friend, and you know, all he's going to do is believe in him, and he'll come and, and take all your junk away, and he'll come and live inside of you, and it's the greatest thing ever. You know, it's, it's so easy. Just say it's so easy. It's so easy. <laughs> Just pretend there's an easy button. You know the easy buttons? You know what I'm about? Huh? The staples, was it a staple? Okay, just pretend this is a staples easy button. This is a heaven easy button in front of you. Now, I just want you just to push it, okay? Ready? One, two, three. Here we go. It's easy, easy, that easy. I had a friend, I had a, uh, a friend that, uh, he's actually my mentor, and he, uh, he would do that and he'd pray for people. He would see people really trying to get healed. And they, cause we, he was an associate director of the healing rooms and I was our intern under him. And so we would pray for people from all over the world every week. And 
So you, you'd always get people that really just trying to get healed so hard and just gritting their teeth and doing everything they know to try to get healed, you know? It's like, I'm like, sorry, it doesn't work like that. Like, <laughs> so he would, he would see, you know, you could see, you could so see that on people. And it just, that really, it's like, it, it, you can't work for it. You can't work for healing. You can't work for, you know, it's, it's been done and it's just, you just got to receive it by grace and his love. And so he would just come over and be like, he'd be like, okay, I'm just going to push the easy button, okay? You just hold on right now. And then he would just like pop the easy button and like, you know, hit their forehead or something, like pretend he's hitting the easy button. And they would just be like, what are you doing? Like just start laughing. The next thing you know, when they forgot about it, they would, their, the healing boom would just come. Yeah, my, my wife, I was telling a story last night, another one is uh, that uh, these young guys were in the in the healing rooms and they were praying for this guy, his legs were that much shorter and uh, it wouldn't grow out and they were just, you know, they were one of our prayer servants and praying and trying so hard and they were getting frustrated and the next one would come down and try and nothing would happen. And they're getting frustrated that nothing's happening and like, why isn't anything happening? So Chuck, he sees this, he walks over and he's like, you know, he's always just filled with the Holy Spirit, he's always drunk, like, always drunk in the Holy Spirit. And so, like, he just, this guy just hosts God, heaven, you know, he hosts his spirit. And he just, he's a, he was a big hippie and he never had, you know, so he has no box. And, uh, <laughs> so, so he just walks around, he's got a big beard, you know, he's like, always drunk. And he's like, okay. He's like, I just want you, he's talking to the person that's getting prayer. He goes, I just want you to take your finger and, you know, they have their hand, their, this their leg out measuring, and you can see that it's that much shorter. He's like, I just want you to take your finger, put it on your nose, and push. And the person pushes, and the leg pops up. <laughs> <laughs> there's no box, you know? Like, there's no, there's, it's just God just loves to have fun with us. And that's the second, that's the other thing, is like, Holy Spirit just loves to have fun with us. Like, He's a lot of fun. Like, you know, like, He created us. Like, He obviously, you know, we have humor, right? So, I mean, he, God, obviously, he, we're made in his image, right? Remember in, in Genesis, it says that we must make man in our image, you know? So, we're created in the image of God, every single person on the planet, and some of them just don't know it. And uh, But we're all created in his image, and if we have, you know, we have emotions, God has emotions. If we have humor, God has humor. He's really funny. Like, he, he, he's the funniest guy I know. Like, you know, like, he just, he's just funny. And, you know, like, I think that's... I think we, I think sometimes we forget that. We forget how funny God is. And I think Holy Spirit's the funniest of them all. Like, he's just, he's a quack. <laughs> I don't know where I can say it because I know him. <laughs> he is. He's just so fun. He's just, he's hilarious. I probably offended some people. <laughs> no, he is. He's just so fun and hilarious. And he, he, he loves to have fun with us and his children. He loves to do amazing things. Oh man, what was that? I was going to share another testimony. Um, man, it's getting hot in here. Is anybody else really hot? Um, another testimony is uh, yesterday. So yesterday we're walking around getting coffee, and um, and I and I get into a room. Oh, hold on, let's just put our hands out. I'm like starting to sweat. <laughs> Holy Spirit. <sighs> Thank you, Jesus. Oh, man. Just increase, God, what you're doing right now in the room. Holy Spirit. Just increase, Father. Wow. Holy Spirit. Just increase what you're doing. God, right now. Thank you, Jesus. Increase, Papa. More, more, more. Wow. Yeah, I just feel like people's mindsets are shifting. I just feel like the sh there's a shifting happening right now. I feel like it's just people, there's a shift in the way you're, the way you're feeling and you think about God, like what I was talking about earlier. I just feel that. I feel like that's starting to shift right now. So God, we just pray for that. Even more increase. Increase right now. Yeah, I see actually people's hunger, hunger like increasing. I see like the like the temperature is rising, and I'm not just like physically, but like the spiritual temperature is rising right now for like the hunger to to just host him, to just host Papa, just to host God. 
But I just see that just increasing right now. Thank you, Father. Increase, God, right now. Increase, Jesus. Increase, increase, increase. Increase, God. Increase, increase. Ha, ha, ha. Jesus. Increase, God. Holy Spirit. Yeah, I actually had a friend that um, never knew anything. Just stay in that place. Don't worry. Just, just, just stay and count on him. Uh -huh. I had a friend that um, was in school and didn't know anything about Holy Spirit. Didn't know anything about God. Didn't know, no, I mean, not God. Didn't know anything about Holy Spirit as in coming and His presence and all that fun, crazy stuff. And um, he was sitting in class and there was this guy speaking. His name was Joaquin. And this guy just, you know, he, he's, he's practiced hosting God. In his presence, and he's in just crazy things happen every time you get around him. And uh, so he's speaking, and my friend Josh is sitting there. And he's like, "What is happening? What is this?" And all of a sudden, something just shifts in his heart and his mind. And the way everything just something just shifted, and all of a sudden he feels this electricity come through his body. And he's like, "I've never experienced this before. I didn't know that you could actually experience the tangible presence of God. I didn't, I didn't know that this was real. I didn't know this was available for Christians." And he starts experiencing electricity literally going through his body. And, and from that day forward, everything switched. Everything changed. And now every single day, he, he not 24-7, he experiences the presence of God 24-7. And when he, from, the day he, from the moment he wakes up to the moment he goes to sleep at night. And he can, if it's not on his whole body, it's at least on his hand, on his right hand. He can feel it like electricity in his right hand all the time. And this guy, he's so sensitive to God. Like, I love him you know, so much. Like, whenever you get around him, like, just, like, stuff happens. You just, you just come over to him like this, and you just, like, lay your hands on him like this, and he just, like, he's down. Like, you know, like, like he'll just get zapped, like, against the, against the wall. And, he, you know, he speaks and travels all over the world, and he's an amazing guy. But, like, I, and I, I get to travel with him some, and he's like this all the time. Like, he just, like, he hosts God. He's learned to, this place of, like, hosting him. And I really feel like there's a, the, I know, I, I've heard people say this like, like, yeah, well, that's just for that person. That's just the grace for that person, you know, in their life. That's a gift that God gave them on that person's life. But this is what I believe. I believe that every time God does something for one person's life, it's like he's doing it. It's like a billboard. He's putting it up on a billboard. He's saying, hey, guys, this is what's available. <laughs> you see this billboard? This is what's available. It, it, it's available for you to encounter God 24-7. Like you can experience me and me dwelling with you 24-7. This is what's available. And then at that point, we, we get to see that and say, okay, now I get to activate my faith. I get to transform my mind and align myself into the place of truth that I can step into that. That I can step into what's available. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, like, like we need to stop disqualifying ourselves from experiencing everything that God has for us. You know, like, we, we can step into that. Like, like I, I remember, um, uh, you know, there's a couple of uh, good friends of mine who are just awesome, who really move in the gift of word of knowledge. I'm actually just speaking about words of knowledge later at 1.30, but they really move in the gifts of word of knowledge. And they, they, they will get up front and they'll say, like, hey, like, there's a person here that has uh, this wrong with them, they got in this car accident, and the car was this color, and this is what happened, and, you know, all kinds of stuff. There's another guy that I know that he'll call up birthdays and, like, first names and, like, crazy, like, super crazy stuff. So I remember seeing that, and I'm like, oh, my gosh, like, that, you can do that? Like, that is awesome. Why didn't I think of that? And so I would just, so I would just ask God, like, God, like, I want... I want to hear your voice like that. Like, I want to hear your voice like that. And do you think God, like, God's not like, oh, I, I, well, uh, I don't want you to hear my voice like that. No, he's like, yes, of course. Like, come on. Like, that's what I'm talking about. Pursue me. Pursue me. Like, I want you to pursue me. And uh, so I would just ask him, you know, God, give me names. And I tried, like, so many times. I got so many wrong. Like, it was awesome. And they go to the, go to the uh, mall and be like, hey, is your name Barbara? And they're like, no. I'm like, oh. That's awesome. I thought you were somebody else. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember I was in Oregon this one time, and we were uh, we were talking. Uh, I was at a um, 
Um, I'm giving away some of my message, but I was at a I was at a uh, conference and we we're coming back. And I was just super. We were just encountering God. We're in the van. We're like, I don't even know how we were driving in the van, and we like get to this train tracks. We stop at this train tracks, and the train going by. I see these feet underneath the train tracks, like moving, like coming towards the train. And I'm like, oh, let's like yell at the window at this guy, or like tell him that Jesus loves him, or do some like drive by like Jesus stuff, you know. And so like I roll down my window, and I'm like super, just like. You know, like, I don't even know what I'm thinking. I'm just, you know, I'm encountering God, you know? This is what happens to you. When, you know, when you're drunk, like, you know, like, out in the world, when you're in the world and you were drunk, you just did stupid stuff, right? You know? And you just didn't care what people thought about you. Like, no, right? You see drunk people and they're just like, don't care. They're like, Woo! like whatever. Like, you know, like, well, it's the same. Like, like, that's just a copycat to God. Like, the devil can only copycat. Like, the devil can't. The devil can't create, right? It's, he's just copycatting. Oh, and so the truth, the reality is like, hey, in the world, you wake up with a hangover and you feel awful about the things that you did, you know, the night before. You know, like, but Holy Spirit, you can drive on Holy Spirit. You don't care what people think about you. You don't care, like, what you're doing. You're just following the Spirit. You have no hangover and you're really proud of what you did the night before. <laughs> <laughs> You know, and so like we just need to we just need to, to get drunk, stay drunk, and get others drunk. <laughs> drink, drink, drink. Yes, <laughs> it is fully allowed. <laughs> you know, like what did what did they say in, in, in Acts? Hey, don't get drunk on wine because it leads to sin, all kinds of bad stuff. But get filled with the Holy Spirit. He's like, hey, the, the, you know, that's why they all thought they were all drunk. When they got filled, baptized in the Holy Spirit, they all came out of the out of the place and like these guys are just drunk. They're like, we're not drunk. It's like nine o'clock in the morning. Like we're <laughs> like we're not drunk as you think we are. <laughs> we're actually filled with the Holy Spirit. And so okay, so I, anyways, I've seen the car of these feet going across the train tracks, and the train goes by, and we we start driving. <laughs> I got my head out the window, and these words from my mouth. I'm like I'm like, hey, is your name Jason? And he's like. Yeah? And I'm like, I like look back, I'm like, Jesus knows your name, man! I'm like, he loves you! And we like drove by, see ya! <laughs> and it was awesome. I mean, it was like a Holy Spirit drive by, man. <laughs> see, he redeems everything. <laughs> It's no longer like, you know, like lead bullets. It's like, you know, Holy Spirit gunshots like out the window. Like, Jesus. Yeah. And I remember, like, that was the first time I got the person's name right. I guess I was it. <laughs> yeah. And so I remember I would just, like, start pursuing that more. And, you know, it's like tonight, like today, like, you know, like I asked God, like, yesterday, like, okay, God, like, tell me, like, you know, I want a specific name, I want something. Like, I want to get a word, like, you know, and I wrote that down. I can show you even where I wrote that down, like, you know, James and Mark. And, uh, you know, like, I had, you just have to take risks sometimes. You just got to kind of step out and go for it. And, but that's all, that, that's part of being filled with the Holy Spirit. That's part of having the Holy Spirit as your best friend. You know, you get to walk with Him wherever you go, and He tells you things about people. And it's so much fun. Like, it's like, Holy Spirit, it's an adventure. It's an adventure with Him. Like, we just all need to get to know Holy Spirit a lot better. You know, like, I feel like we know, like, the attributes of Jesus and the Father God, but sometimes when it comes to the Holy Spirit, we kind of forget, you know, what Holy Spirit, sometimes we just categorize Him as, like, those weird meetings that happen at some Pentecostal church somewhere. You know what I mean? Like, where people are jumping on the pews and all that kind of stuff. You know, but Holy Spirit so has got so much more depth than that. Yes, he, yeah, he does do some funny stuff, and you know sometimes you know people shake, and but reality is if you stick your finger in a light socket, you're gonna shake, right? Well, God, God's a lot more powerful than a light socket, <laughs> you know. And uh, so when you when you live this life with Holy Spirit, fun things happen, you know. It's it's the greatest adventure in the world. It's 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 the greatest it's the greatest gift that God has ever given mankind. And it's Holy Spirit. You know, and, and that's how Jesus put it. He's like, hey, I can't go. If I, if I leave, I'm going to give you the gift. His name's Holy Spirit. It's the deepest, most intimate part of me. And you get to take that. And He lives inside of you. He goes with you everywhere. And, you know, when you walk into a room, things change. I remember when we were in uh, St. John one time. And I'm going to share this testimony last time I was here speaking. But um, uh, we're talking with a guy. And... Uh, 
We're at a tea shop. We're getting ready to go watch uh, one movie, uh, Son, of, uh, Son of God, I think it's called. And uh, so we're, we went out to get some tea, and we were going to pick some people before. And so I'm standing there talking to this guy, and, I'm, and he's working behind the desk of the tea shop, and I'm just talking to him, and I was like, man, I want to release God on him somehow. And I'm just like encountering Holy Spirit. I'm hosting his presence. I can feel the presence of God all over me. And I'm just hosting him. And, and, you know, who knows what's happening around me? I don't know. Maybe people are getting accidentally healed. I don't know it. Like, you know, who knows what happens when this kingdom comes? And uh, you know, I was probably, this is probably going to be like a movie screen in heaven that we get to like watch all the stuff that happened that we had no idea that happened, you know? <laughs> and, uh, and uh, you know, probably like, the angels like sit around and watch. It's like, oh, watch this one. This is a good. One. This is a good part. <laughs> <laughs> and anyways, okay. So that's um, <laughs> my it's my child like this coming out. I think um, I'm a youth pastor. So um, okay. So uh, so uh, you know, we're, I'm standing there talking. I'm standing there talking to this guy. And so I said, hey, like, do you have pain in your body? And I don't even remember if I got a word knowledge or not. I just said, I think I might just ask him, hey, do you have pain in your body? Like, can I pray for you? And he's like, uh, just give me a minute. And so he runs over to his boss. And I thought he was going to be like, you know, no, I can't because I'm working or something. And uh, so he comes back and he goes, I just took my break so you can come pray for me. I'm like, sweet. This is awesome. So we walk out. We sit on the benches there and, and uh, you know, right in the middle of the mall. Excuse me, where people are walking by. And, and I'm like, okay, God, like, what do you want to do? And we're just talking. And I... I and he actually did a pain in his back or something. We prayed for him. I think the pain left or got significantly better. And then he and he interrupts me. He's like, he's like, do you know the real reason why I actually came out here? I'm like, no. I thought you wanted to get prayed over. And he's like, well, when you were standing there talking to me, I felt warmth over my whole entire body. I could feel like this warmth thing over everything of me, of my whole body, and I had to come talk to you. And I'm like, dude, that's Jesus. Like, God's alive. He's real, and He loves you. And, and you know, that's His presence. And He gave His life to Jesus. Wow. You know, like, He's like, I want, I want that. Like, I want Jesus as my best friend. And, uh, you know, like, so who knows what happens when you're just hosting Him? When you're hosting His presence, who, I mean, you have no idea what's going on in the atmosphere around you. You know, the reality is, like, if we think that we don't care anything, then you're going to live that out. You know, you're, if you if you re, if you think like, hey, I walk into a room and you know people are depressed and you know I'm just I'm just trying not to get depressed because they're all depressed and you know like you're just trying to fight that like well that's you're gonna just you're gonna live in that reality but if you realize like oh man I carry something I carry heaven like tangibly literally like like this bubble like I'm experiencing revival if you want to experience it come jump in my bubble like you know like if you re- walk with that understanding when you walk into a room. The light is there because the light is in you, because Holy Spirit is in you, His kingdom's there. And when you walk into the room, something happens and shifts. All of a sudden, people aren't, aren't you know, depressed anymore. There's, you're starting to see something shift as you, as just because you showed up, because the king showed up, and he lives inside of you. Come on. You know what I'm saying? This is good news. This is the gospel. <laughs> Jesus, Holy Spirit, thank you, God, thank you, Jesus. I guess I'll read like a scripture. This is what you're supposed to do. <laughs> Just kidding. So, First Corinthians three sixteen says, "Do you not know that you're a temple of God? The Spirit of God dwells in you. We are temples of God. Do you not know that you are a temple of God? That the Spirit of God dwells in you." Holy Spirit dwells inside of you. Jesus, I like that word. And I love, I love also what, what Jesus said is, is when he said, hey, it's better than I leave. You know, he talks about that in John. And he says, um, he says uh, uh, you're going to do greater things than I did. Have you ever thought about that? <laughs> I don't know if you guys have that. <laughs> I'm like, dude, you're raised the dead. Yeah. <laughs> like, he's gonna, he, that's what he said. He said, this is better I go. I'm going to send you Holy Spirit, and you're going to do greater things than I did. Because I go to my Father, who's in heaven. Because I'm leaving. I'm going to send you Holy Spirit, and you're going to do greater things than I did. Why? Because we're representing Him. We're representing 
We're representing Jesus. We're representing God the Father. He's like, listen, to that. He's like, I'm leaving. So you, you're going to do greater things. I am my friend. Me and my friend once was thinking about this, and um, and uh, we were just like, what is greater works? Like, what does that even mean? Like, what is greater works? And uh, we were talking about it. There was this. There was this lady. She had um, uh, she had uh, two uh, rods in her back. She was an elderly lady, and she broke her back and snapped it right in half. And uh, wasn't able to, they had to put metal rods right to them, right up to keep their spine straight, and they wrapped a coil around her rods and around the, around the spine, hold the rods and everything in place. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so she, and they actually, what they do is they slit your throat here, and they incision it down in through your throat that way, and through your back, they put it back in. And so she had staples, and this, is just, <laughs> this just got done. She had big staples all the way across and had the neck brace. And so uh, my friend Ahab goes out and prays for her and just thought the neck brace. So she takes the neck brace off and she's like I'm moving around. She's like, oh, it feels totally better. And so they pray over her. And, and so all of a sudden, so he doesn't know about back kind of thing. And so she, when you have metal rods in your back, you can't bend over, right? You, if you have metal, metal rods, you can only do like so much. There's only so, so much movement you can do, right, with metal rods in your back. So all of a sudden, with the staples in her neck, Newly, new surgery, something changes, and she's bending over and touching her toes. Crazy. She's wow. completely bending over, she's moving around, full and building, doing all these things that she's never could do before. And, uh, and I remember, this, this is in Nebraska, I remember seeing her, we interviewed her, and uh, she, you know, she's still stapled and she's like, oh, she's this old lady, it was super awesome, she was so cool. She's like, yeah, I went home, because we like, we traveled, for uh, about a month, oh, about a week, and went all around the state, and we all came back to the same church. And so she's like, during the week, I went home. I'm like, I'm like uh, doing my uh, doing my laundry and, and uh, vacuuming the floor. She's like, I'm doing all kinds of stuff, you know. And and, and she's like moving on her side, I'm no pain. So she goes back to the doctor. We leave. We go back to California. She goes back to the doctor, and they get X-rays. And the doctor comes in freaking out and says, You got another surgery. And she's like, no, I didn't. I just got prayer. <laughs> and he's like, well, this is impossible. There's no way. You must have went, got, went to another doctor and got another surgery because your uh, metal rods aren't there anymore. Oh, and so, so she shows, they put, she, they put up the x-ray on the screen, you know, where you can see it. And look, and, and we, it's all documented. And there is this, the coil that does absolutely nothing, doesn't cause any issue, doesn't do anything. It just holds the rods that were there in place. The coil is still there, wrapped around. So like God left the coil in to show that, that they did the surgery and it doesn't cause any pain, it doesn't do nothing, it's still there. Wow. Isn't that amazing? <laughs> and so when we and our friends were talking about this, we're like, man, that's greater works. Like, there was, I don't think there was metal in people's bodies like back then, or like, you know, another one was this guy, he had a pacemaker in, in, installed, and the pacemaker disappeared, and got, it was healed. And we're like, that's greater works. Like, there was no pacemakers back then. Like, there, you know, like, have you guys ever thought about that? No. I just think that's kind of cool. <laughs> but we're going to do greater works, because Holy Spirit lives in us. You know, we get to go on this great adventure of life with Holy Spirit, with our best friend. Where, where he goes with us everywhere. You know, like, it's just an adventure. I'm going to share, like, I'm going to kind of get ready to finish, and we're going to, like, pray and just get whacked somewhere, and then whatever. Okay, does that sound good? <laughs> Sounds good. So, you know, I'm just going to share another, like, kind of little adventure. You know, like, I think once we really start to understand how much how much fun it is with Holy Spirit, we'll just, we'll just get rocked and just addicted to this thing. You know, we'll just get possessed by God. And, uh, so we're, me and my friends were traveling and we were going to, uh, uh, me, uh, me and Chris, and we were going to um, um, the Middle East, and, but we were also in, we were in um, France and we we're in England. And so we were like, it was kind of a long trip, it was like a three week trip, and so we're like, okay, so let's, what are we going to do? We had like four days between a couple of conferences that we didn't have any plans, we had no place to stay, and or anything. We're like, well, what do you want to do? I'm like, I don't know. Let's ask, let's ask Holy Spirit. We're like, so it was a couple days went by. I'm like, I think we should go to Paris. I'm like, yeah, I think we should go to Paris too. Because we were in South France. 
And we're like, I think we should go to Paris too. I'm like, awesome. Like, Do you know anyone in Paris? No, I don't know anyone in Paris. Me either. We're like, all right, well, let's just see what happens. So we still had four days that was unplanned, you know, that we had no place to stay. It was between conference and we were we had to catch a flight out of England and we didn't book a flight from South France to England because we were just waiting for Holy Spirit to do whatever he wanted to do. So somehow we had to get to England, to London, and uh, get a ticket and find a place to live for four days. And um, so we do the conference, and it was awesome, had some cool winter. We went to England first, went to London first, did, did a conference, went to South France, did a conference, spoke at some churches. And then uh, we, so we're, the days coming up, like a couple days away, or it was like two days away, and uh, when we had these four days, we didn't know what we were going to do, or where we were going to live, or what's going to happen. So we're like, okay, what are we going to do? Like, we just kept feeling parents, parents. Like, okay, Holy Spirit, however you do it, do whatever you want to do. And we just stayed drunk the whole time and didn't really think about it. And uh, then this person came up to us after the last day of the conference, and we're like, hey, uh, if you're this Vietnamese guy, who was French, it was super awesome. And uh, it, it was, uh, he goes, hey, I live in Paris. And if you're ever around in Paris, like, come stay at my house. I'd love for you to stay at my house. I'm like, we're like, really? Like, how about this weekend? <laughs> He's like, yes, that would be awesome. Would you come, please? And then this other lady came up, because we don't speak French. And this other lady came up, and, and she's like, uh, she was a translator for the conference for when we, when we spoke. And she's like, hey, I'm, uh, you know, like, I live in Paris. And, you know, like, I'll be your translator if you ever come to Paris. And we're like, perfect, we're actually coming there this weekend, you know? <laughs> and so we we somehow, like, I remember even the whole, we were trying to get a train, speed train up there, and we couldn't even, to get our tickets, like, they, like, the ticket, we hardly had, we didn't have any money either, by the way. And so, like, <laughs> so, so, so somebody, like, gave us, like, I think they gave us money at the comp, like, for us speaking, like, we weren't even the headline speakers, we were just there ministering, so we didn't expect to get any money. And so they... Gave us, they gave us some money. We're like, perfect. This is going to be perfect. So we used the money to buy the tickets, but it was like hard to even get the tickets. The tickets kept disappearing. So they would come up on the screen, like, and we were like, oh, let's see if there's another one. And then it would disappear. And we're like, man, how are we going to get, like, the tickets keep on disappearing. So we just, like, pray, God, command all the, the tickets to come back in Jesus' name. And we'd, like, hit the button again, and boop, they'd come back up. And they were too expensive, so we're like, God, we need cheaper ones. So like, and so we'd pray again, we'd hit the refresh button, and boop, they got cheaper ones. And so we would, you know, that's how we got to Paris. And so, so me and my friends, we we doing the speed train. We had to get to take a couple other trains. We got to Paris, and we got uh, at this guy's house. We're hanging out there, and and he's like, Listen, I have two. I have some places I want to take you guys, and I'm going to try to get you to speak at two churches. And so he. My friend Chris got to speak last minute at this one church. I went to this other church, and God just blew up. And like literally, like like there was it was so crazy. Like so many miracles happened. Like I, I remember Chris coming back. He's like, man, like I've never seen it in my life. Like every single person that I prayed for got healed instantly. Like and it was just like in a moment. Like did he, he just prayed for this person and got instantly healed. And it was like. And like God did all this amazing stuff, we ended up going to someone else's house, and this lady gets totally rocked and gets like healed of this like uh, chronic pain and like illness that she had that she was like kind of dying and stuff, and and God like healed her, and it was amazing, and like God just totally showed up, and it was awesome. But that was like an adventure that we just went on, like with Holy Spirit. We had no idea where we were going, no idea what was happening, and God just totally made the way. And so that that I just wanted to share that with you guys because. Because, you know, the cool thing is, is like when we, get, when we get to know him as our best friend, when we get to know Jesus, when we get to know Holy Spirit as our best friend, we get to go on Holy Spirit Adventures. And uh, how many want to go on that? Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. Jesus, Holy Spirit. All right, well, let's just, let's just hold our hands out. Thank you, God. Jesus, why don't, we just, why don't we just stand up for a minute, actually? Yeah, and uh, I know, like, I think they said we go to 12, but that seems like really long. Is, uh, what are you guys expecting this to go to? Does it matter? 
Okay, so we'll maybe we're just gonna do some. You guys want to do a little bit of activation, like just kind of fun Holy Spirit activation for a minute. Does that sound good? Everyone down? Get ready to get stretched a little. <laughs> First, you gotta get drunk. <laughs> so just put your hands out. Come on, Jesus, Holy Spirit. We'll just have some of our uh, um, guys that just pray uh, pray for people. Jeff and Michelle, and um, they're just gonna lay hands on you for a minute. I just want you just to tap into the Holy Spirit. Tap into heaven right now. You know, also we, do, we just turn our affection to Him. We just turn our heart, turn our affection to Him. That's, that's all it is. Like, He's just there. He's always there. And sometimes we just need to recognize that He's there. And realize that there's nothing that can keep you from Him. Like, there's nothing that's going to, that can, that, you know, I've seen, I've seen Satanists encounter the presence of God and get healed and get saved. Okay, so if a Satanist can get, get can feel the presence of God, a Christian can feel the presence of God, can encounter Him, right? Nothing can stand in your way. Like, you know, sin isn't big enough. Jesus took care of that on the cross. So there's no, there's no, nothing that can get in your way from encountering the most amazing, good Father in the universe. <laughs> uh, sometimes we just, sometimes we need to know that, because sometimes we forget that. So God, we just release your presence. Lord, holy, holy, holy. Wow! Yeah, we release your presence right now in Jesus' name. We just release your presence. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Increase, 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 increase. <laughs> yes, God, increase. Wow! Ooh, wow, yeah. There we go. Just have a seat. <laughs> increase more. Increase more. Father, increase more. Increase, increase, increase. Increase more. Oh, thank you, Papa. <laughs> yeah, it's all about Holy Spirit. Wow, it's all about Him and His kingdom. Oh, man. Jesus, increase, increase, God, increase, yeah, increase. Thank you, God, for filling us up. Oh man, sometimes we just need to get so filled that we just leak on everybody. <laughs> you know, we just need to get filled up and leak. <laughs> the thing is, if, if if we're just always leaking, we always need to keep being filled, right? right. Because like, if we just keep leaking and never keep never keep getting filled, then we're just gonna we're just going to leak everything all out. We need to get constantly, continually filled up with Him as we continually leak on other people. <laughs> yes, God. Thank you, Father. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Whoa! Holy, 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 holy. Holy, 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 holy. Jesus, increase, God, increase, 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 God, increase, increase. <laughs> ah, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> more, 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 more. Come on, just tell him how much, he, how good he is. Whoa, Jesus. <laughs> thank you, Father. Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, holy, 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 holy. <laughs> Thank you, God. Thank you, Jesus. Increase, Lord, increase. Yes, God. Yes, God. Yeah. Yep, and I just I just want to uh, I just want to cast out the spirit of seriousness in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes we just need to relax and just like have fun. Oh man. <laughs> oh man. Jesus. <laughs> wow. Yeah, you know, it's it, what did Jesus say? You know, unless you become like a little child. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> wow. Oh, <man. laughs> unless you become like a little child. <laughs> more, 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 more. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, increase, God, increase, God. More, 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 more. Little children, God, thank you, God. You are happy with little children. 
Jesus. Increase, Papa. Increase, increase, increase. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Alright, you just come with me. You just gonna walk, just, just walk with me a little bit. You're just gonna lay hands on people, okay? It's just carrying this something. You know what I mean? The more we give away, the more we just lay hands on these two beautiful girls over here. <laughs> oh, more, more, just come with me. <laughs> Jesus. Oh, and right here, just lay your hands on her. <laughs> you know, when we honor what God is doing, wow, in the room, it just increases, right? <laughs> Sometimes we just need to honor what's on other people. <laughs> Sometimes we have to recognize what God is doing on other people's lives in the moment. <laughs> wow, Father, because you all carry the presence of God. <laughs> Jesus, more, 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 more. <laughs> More, more, more. Wow, is anybody feeling like a heat or a fire? If you're feeling heat or fire, raise your hand. Yeah, come on. Just start laying hands on more people. Like, if you're just feeling heat or fire on you, raise your hand. Are you more Uh, oh man, well it's 12 o'clock, so like, we're going to dismiss, so here's my assignment. What we've learned is, uh, is uh, uh, get drunk, stay drunk, and get others drunk. Okay? So repeat after me. Get drunk, stay drunk, and get others drunk. Way to go. Alright, you pass. You all pass. A plus. A plus plus. <laughs> and you feel free to stay around and encounter God more. Like the next one is at 1:30, and I'm not really. I think I'm. I'm here, and I think there's a bunch of other ones, other places. So, uh, yeah, I don't. And do we do we know what the other ones are? I don't know anything. Okay, <laughs> so you're gonna have to go around and check them out. So I'm talking about words and knowledge uh, at 1:30 here. So you guys are awesome. <laughs> Yeah, think we should just stop that and 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 think we should just stop that